Shall we get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen? I think we should. He's the hardest touring comic in Britain. In fact, let's get him out quick. In 20 minutes, he's due on stage at the Carlisle Chuckle Hut. <laughs> then onto the Lands End Laughter Lounge. Will you please welcome Mr. Jimmy Carr? <laughs> Well, Jimmy, it is great to see you. And you know, I just noticed something there because uh, I know Jimmy fairly well. But when I just did the uh, the manly embrace there when you came in, there's a lot less of you. Where's it gone? Look at this incredible weight loss. I don't know if you remember, but Jimmy was, uh, you know, quite plump. You were looking quite round, weren't you, for a while? It's always a backhanded compliment. No, no, you well, you well, can well, never a, just be nice. There's when you were on the show before, and for some reason you stripped off, just completely unbeknownst to me. Well, just... now that's like an anxiety dream. Basically, <laughs> what happened to me was I came on this show and you undressed me, mm. and, and my moobs. Yeah. Man boobs or mitts, man tits were, were on display to the nation. I thought I've got to get rid of those. One of them fell on the table, gave me a blister. <laughs> Almost lost a nail. So it, was, it wasn't actually because of that, was it? It was slightly because of that. I did I'm feel sorry. really self conscious I'm about really the fact. Sorry. And, and it was that kind of thing where I sort of hit a bit of middle age and getting a bit broader. And I thought my stomach's the same size as my chest. I'm turning yeah. into a sausage. I'm not, like, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that happening to me either. So, um, when. <laughs> Have you got, like, a funhouse mirror in your house? <laughs> <laughs> just, just very low-level lighting. Um, so, uh, how did you do it? Because people all love to know. Diet tips and that kind of thing. What did you do? Was it I'm writing a diet you... book, actually. No, seriously? Yeah, it's called Put That Down Fatty. Ah. <laughs> Anything else in it, or is that it? That's no, that's it. it. That's, that's the whole thing. More of a pamphlet, really. And it's made of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I stopped eating after gigs. That's all I did. I haven't gone on a diet or anything. I still eat the same food I always had, you know, delicious, fatty foods and yeah, chips yeah, and things. Yeah. But during the day, not... Because I used to finish a gig and I work all the time. So, like, sort of, you know, you know, if you're midnight and you get back to the hotel and you think, right, I'll have a burger and chips, yeah. and it just kind of stays on you, feel a bit sluggish and... Well, they, I, I believe there's no actual truth is, but everyone seems to think that uh, if you eat before bed, that turns to kind of fat because you're not running around exercising. I don't think there is any in it. That's what we all think. No, It seems to have worked for me. It's a weird thing as well, being in show business, sort of being on stage, and I realise, you know, as, as a clown, I'm the lowest rung on the showbiz ladder, but it does make you a bit more vain than you would ordinarily be. I mean, I'm 37 years of age. I shouldn't be as vain as I am. I realise you can't polish a turd. But you can, <laughs> you can roll it in glitter, can't you? So, you try and... You, know you do the best with what you've got, don't you? I think that's what's going to be on your tombstone. Now, here lies a glittery turd. That's, <laughs> that's, you've brought that on yourself, Jimmy. I'd be happy with that. <laughs> OK, uh, now, when you're out there, when you're... Well, let's deal with this thing first that's been in the papers this week, because uh, you made a joke on stage. And uh, as seems to happen on a regular basis these days, is someone makes a joke and everyone sort of jumps on it, and uh, maybe they have a point, maybe they don't. I don't know. It was a joke about servicemen. What do you, what do you say about that situation I, on that joke? I, th I felt awful about it. I mean, the, the joke was about... Um, our, I mean, you know, for people that didn't hear it or didn't, uh, you know, read it in the paper, I felt really, really awful about it. I've dropped it from the show now, that yeah. gag, because you also think if that... It makes it to the media. There's certain things you can do on stage that you can't do on TV and you can't do on radio. And I'm very edgy, I'm very offensive on stage, and I'm very open about that, and we say that, we make it very clear to people, well, it's not for everyone. It's on your website saying if you're going to book to see this show, number one is it might be offensive, number two is don't necessarily expect to laugh. <laughs> is that, or did I imagine the second part? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, OK, um, let me ask you about... I know parts of your show, you have bits where you come out and you do straight-ahead stuff, and you, but you do quite a lot of interacting with the audience still, don't you? Yeah, I do a lot of chatting with the now, audience. You, uh, uh, this is when you ask them for questions, also sometimes you give them advice, is that right? I give them quite a lot of advice. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, it's a nice mix, because I think if you just got up and... I do sort of three gags a minute for two hours, so it can get a little bit relentless, so it's nice to go and have a sit-down and do something else that kind of mixes it up a little bit. So on the DVD, I kind of go and sit down, give them some relationship advice and... Oh, we have a clip. We have a clip of Jimmy's uh, DVD. It's called Telling Jokes. Yeah, let's not make things complicated for Nana at Christmas. That's a, yeah, it's <laughs> about... Keep it nice and simple, <laughs> shall we? This is a clip from uh, Jimmy Carr, Telling Jokes. And this is you offering some advice to the audience, I These believe. are presumably the three clean jokes that we can play on television Well, well this show. is advice to do with uh, sex, I believe. Oh, right, OK, well... OK, great. let's have a look at this. And, this see if, and if you want to act upon this, feel free. This is Jimmy's advice to you. Right, some sex tips. Let's try and be grown up about this, yeah? <laughs> Gentlemen, if you're having sex with a new partner for the first time, never take a run-up. <laughs> I know what you like, you want to make a good first impression, but you don't want to actually leave a dent. <laughs> you can now get practically invisible spray-on condoms, which have been designed specifically for gullible women. <laughs> 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 I 
It's a good indicator that a woman fancies you if when you're talking to her, she touches her hair. If it's a pubic hair, it's a cert. <laughs> if you are going to have sex, I can't stress this enough, if you're going to have sex with someone that you don't know, always, always, always ask. <laughs> You need to ask telling jokes. There you go. And okay. you tell a lot of jokes. There's loads. There's, you know. Uh, OK. How long have you been doing uh, comedy for now? Ten years? It's been ten, uh, ten years. That's yeah. pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty good. Yeah, I've, I've come a long way on this amount of time. Well, but you must now be, I would have thought... I remember the first time I saw it, I thought, this is a great guy, he's going to go far, but you never know whether people are going to have the legs to carry on, and yet you're still, I mean, if anything, more popular than ever before. Uh, yeah, I think, well, I think I'm getting better at it. I mean, without sort of sounding full of myself, I think when I started, I was so uptight and so kind of staccato in my sort of delivery. And now I'm a little bit looser on stage and I'm, I'm better with the audience and I'm more who I am on stage. Um, and, you know, I think you, I think you get better just... To, like in any career, you would expect to get better. And I think show business is the same. You get a little bit better at it as the, as the years go by. you just got more relaxed, I guess, as much as anything. Yeah. OK. Do you like touring, though? I guess it must be quite a solitary thing because you're away a lot, aren't you? I mean, you really are. You're working... What, four or five nights of the week you're on stage? Yeah, maybe five, six, yeah. That's a lot. I mean, that's a lot. And most of those, you know, you're out of London. You're travelling away from your home. I love it? it. OK, how do you occupy your time? If you can at all keep that vaguely clean, that would be appreciated. But what do you do uh, before the show, immediately and afterwards? Well, you sort of, you, I mean, you meet people after the show. Always, uh, you know, and you tend to meet people beforehand. You have well, a like wander around town and get swingers coffee. Swingers clubs, that kind of thing? <laughs> not that kind of, It's not one of your weird fantasies now. <laughs> So, what you, so you meet the, uh, the audience after the show? Always meet the audience after the show and say hello. Just because I, I, I'm a big comedy fan. Before I was a comedy performer, I used to go and see a lot of comedy shows. And, and if you ever get to meet the performer afterwards, and just even just saying hello, it sort of makes all the difference. Just to sort of, it makes you feel like more of a night out, I think. Uh, it's nice. And when you're interacting with people, I'm sure, I'm sure people have enjoyed the show, but do other people say to you, you know, I didn't like that joke or that bit didn't work? Do they give you feedback in that way? And how do you deal with it if they do? Uh, they give me an awful lot of feedback. It tends to be the people that come to my shows aren't offended. And, and primarily they're not offended because that's what they came for, yeah. those kind of jokes. So they're not going to say, I wish you hadn't done that kind of material, obviously, or they wouldn't be there. Yeah, but you get a lot of sort of positive feedback on that was a good gig or that was a funny thing you did. I mean, a lot through Twitter these days. I'm obsessed by this sort of Twitter thing. And the idea that you can sort of have a direct conversation with people that come to see your shows, it's brilliant. You like being able to directly communicate. There's no kind of uh, there's, no, there's no kind of middleman. People can just get in touch straight away. Does Jimmy... Uh, Jimmy always strikes me as this, and I hope he does you as well, as a very kind of optimistic, very upbeat. Uh, you seem grateful for what you've got. You seem to be in a good mood most of the time. Uh, I, I right realise I'm captain of the lucky club, yeah. So you feel, you feel blessed in that respect? Yeah, totally, yeah. Uh, but do you get grumpy other things that annoy you? Because, once again, a lot of comedians use that as their stock in trade. They go on stage and they use the kind of grumpy old man thing. They, uh, you know, and some of them genuinely are quite grumpy. Like, I Jack like... D, I think he's genuinely grumpy most <laughs> yeah. of the time. Uh, Stuart Lee seems that way. Are you at all? Do I, don't you have get, those moments? I don't get grumpy, but I, the little things in life sometimes irritate me. You know, when I'm, I'm travelling around, I spend a lot of time on the road driving. Yeah. When it says McDonald's restaurant, and you think, it's not a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, we all know what McDonald's is. There's no need to put restaurant. <laughs> How annoyed would your Jane be if on your next anniversary you went, yeah, I booked a restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to the maitre d', Ronald, I think his name was. <laughs> I booked us a table for two, he recommends the filio fish. <laughs> She'd murder you. Well, I think if I gave her the Happy Meal toy, she'd be OK. <laughs> um, you must be, like me, excited to be in the same building, uh, let alone on the same show, as Serena Williams. It, she's an extraordinary Phenomenal. talent. Because we're both tennis fans. I don't know how many tennis fans we have this evening, but we're big tennis fans. We play together a lot. Well, do, you, do you remember, like, uh, it used to be sort of, uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago, women's tennis wasn't as much fun to watch as men's tennis. And thanks to Serena, it just is. It's yeah. an amazing... If anything, it's better to watch. The pace of the game is just... She's a phenomenon. She's yeah. amazing. All right, here's the thing. Before the show, we are Serena, because, you know, everyone who plays a sport, you know, in a sport, and uh, you play a bit of football, don't you, Robbie? And I know you're pretty good, aren't you? You're pretty good at football. I'm all right. I used to be. Used but to be. We the all knee's think, gone now. But we all think we can kind of do it professional, and you meet a professional, you realise you can't really, you can't really. But I thought, let's see, uh, and, and they say, Serena, I don't know what you saying, but they say that, you know, uh, women tennis players aren't as good as male tennis players. Mm. Okay. Hmm. And, I, and I know that the men tennis players, they have a bigger prize at certain events, which seems odd to me, and I'm sure you might even agree on that. Yeah, I mean, we work just as hard since yeah, yeah. forever, so... Uh, but then some people, not me, but maybe Jimmy and Robbie might say, that, um, <laughs> that even though you're a professional, you would serve against people like us, we could probably handle that kind of pressure. I think a lot of people would say, because you guys are men and yeah. are clearly stronger, so. Yeah. so... So, before the show, we asked Serena if she would do a serve against each of us. <laughs> well, we asked her to wrestle first, and then we set yeah, her. Yeah. <laughs> we aimed high, and then we came down yeah. to serve. Yeah. Yeah. This is Jimmy, so I'll show you Robbie's later on. This is Jimmy 
uh, on the receiving end of one of Serena's serves. And I imagine, Serena, you're probably serving here, I would have thought, probably only at about well, what percentage of your actual game serve? Because you weren't warmed up and obviously you weren't yeah, in your attention. You know, I wanted to go really light on him because, you know, he's, you know, a little frail, so I figured <laughs> I'd go. Yes, I think you have the measure of the man. That's right. Uh, so, what, what, how many percentage do you think? What, 50% of your proper serve? 40? Five. <laughs> Wow. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see how, how well uh, Jimmy did against uh, Serena serving at about 5% of her actual ability. <laughs> <laughs> we have, can we see? This is slow-mo. <laughs> yeah. You see, what you did wrong there, if you don't mind me saying, though, is not hit the ball. <laughs> you think I should have hit it? You should have hit the ball back. Was that you You're being a gentleman? You're not a gentleman. gentleman. Would you play a lady? <laughs> right. um, okay. Uh, that was probably, uh, you know, not your best example of tennis, I would have thought. No, I'm, I'm normally a okay. little bit better. Okay. Not uh, much, though. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. Before we uh, say goodbye to Jimmy, and I love having you on the show, because you always, you always do great jokes, which I like, you come prepared. I'm finding your boots a little bit uh, disturbing. To What's the with my boots? Because they're like a lady's boots. Show that other one to the... Like, take What's one down. Look at this. It's got a kind of a V on the top, and these are the sort of boots that uh, Kim Cattrall would wear on Sex and the City. <laughs> what? Yeah, I bought them off her. I, I must. Have. <laughs> yeah, well, right. It's just a pair of boots. And once again, you're wearing jeans in a way which is unconvincing. How? What? How am I wearing jeans in an unconvincing way? You're just because wear... you normally dress as Willy Wonka. <laughs> are you? Why are you having a go at me? You look like a vicar trying to dress casual to impress the teenagers. <laughs> I, I object to that. I think I look like an undercover cop at Glastonbury. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, but you know the thing about clothes, the reason I went to it wasn't just to, to, to uh, have a joke at your expense, was because in the programme for Jimmy's tour at the moment, which is uh, Jimmy called Rape Your Weird, when there's some, yeah, a lot of work's going to this, a lot of photographs, a lot of funny ideas, but also there's a cut out and keep Jimmy so you can dress Jimmy, you see? So you can dress your own Jimmy. <laughs> um, but we had, a, we've got another one on the programme, the special, the early edition of the programme, which I think they stopped making, Due to complaints, which was the, the <sighs> cut out, that, that cut out and dressed Jimmy. I don't know if you saw that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> want to keep that? <laughs> uh, Jimmy, it's great to have you back on the show. Mr. Jimmy Carr, ladies and gentlemen. You. Always, always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr. Thanks for taking a break from the pornography to watch my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Now, back to jerking off.